Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into my channel, welcome. Today is April 20th, so I got into uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California last night. This is the uh, dark site owned and managed by the Riverside Astronomical Society. If you're looking for uh, a club in the Southern California area, I would uh, really suggest you uh, go to their website, check out uh, what this club has to offer. In my opinion, it's a, it's a good deal. I also belong to the Silicon Valley Astronomical Society and their dark side is up in uh, Blue Canyon Airport, although they have a temporary uh, uh, winter site, uh, I believe, in, in the Auburn area. Another great club. But this facility here has concrete pads. Um, you can uh, uh, pay for a pad where you basically uh, rent it or lease it. You could put a, a dome on it. Uh, there's also observatories back here with sliding roofs so there's uh, a little bit for some uh, for everyone out here and this coming weekend will be a star party and so the expectation is probably starting tomorrow night but in particularly uh, Friday night a lot more people will be showing up they'll be camping they'll be bringing their RVs and uh, there's two houses here uh, with uh, bunk beds and and, and beds on a first come first serve basis. So it's uh, really a, a great club for this area here, Bortle Four Skies, which are, are really great compared to my 789 Skies at home up in San Mateo, California. So uh, just want to give a little plug for Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station and the Riverside Astronomical uh, Society. So uh, got in here last night uh, got set up, really excited, got uh, the ASI Air uh, fired up, built my plan for uh, NM51 um, calibration. Uh, I mean, uh, polar alignment was a breeze. Uh, Love the facility and the uh, ASI Air, uh, really easy. And uh, then I set up to execute my plan. Again, I'm using my new camera, the ASI 533MM Pro, and I have uh, decided to put my seven, uh, eight position filter wheel uh, on my Celestron Edge HD 8, and that was the uh, equipment uh, for uh, this trip. I didn't bring my Xenostar Z61. I didn't see any really suitable objects to shoot with the smaller scope. And I wanted to keep it a little bit simple and just worry about one scope during the night. So anyway, um, polar alignment went great, got set up, uh, started imaging. Everything was really looking good, collecting uh, the red filter on M51, and then the winds came up. So that is one of the uh, challenges and uh, imaging in the desert environment based upon my experience. Uh, most times during the summer when I come down here, uh, the winds generally taper off uh, early evening and then they stay uh, down uh, during the night. But last night was an exception. Again, uh, the weather in uh, both Northern and Southern California this year is a little bit unusual. Uh, so I noticed that the winds, the gust winds over 20 miles an hour were moving my mount around, or uh, at least uh, the uh, impacting, you know, the Edge H, uh, uh, HD8, its profile is kind of like a little sail, so it can uh, be impacted by the wind. And I noticed that uh, as my guiding was uh, deteriorating. And so I just made a decision, okay, time to shut things down for the night and uh, get some rest. So I went to bed around 10.30 and uh, slept through the night. Now, speaking about winds in the desert, that's where a dome like this uh, would be a real luxury. Uh, I, I can't afford it uh, with my budget that I have allocated for my uh, astronomical imaging, or even better would be one of those uh, uh, observatories, those little huts back there with the roof that slides off. 
uh, they will uh, shelter the, your telescope uh, much better from the wind than just being open out here. But that's okay. This is uh, how I'm equipped and I still manage to have fun and a good time. And, you know, I take my chances. While the skies were clear last night, the winds were very gusty and everything. So uh, I took a look at the forecast for tonight. I use windy.com. They give uh, the European forecast, uh, what the uh, US forecasters think are gonna happen. Uh, they don't agree. Uh, the European forecast says uh, gusty winds again tonight. The US uh, uh, forecasters saying that the winds will be down tonight. The only way to know is once the night starts. So uh, we'll try and uh, image tonight uh, if the winds are down. Now, if you saw my last video, I think it was RGB versus LRGB. I want to thank everyone that took time to comment and share your thoughts and techniques. And I am going to start to incorporate some L into my uh, imaging when I'm shooting RGB. And what I thought I would do is like what we should do. We should experiment. Each of us may have slightly different conditions that we image under based upon the object that we may be going after. Uh, you know, uh, what might be right for one uh, might not be right for another. And so uh, last night, what I was going to do is I was going to shoot all RGB. And at the end of the night, I was just going to uh, shoot 10 luminous uh, images uh, at uh, 180 seconds or three minutes uh, just to try to get a feel for what my luminous exposure should be. And then tonight I was going to come in and I was going to shoot my luminous. And what I wanted to do was, uh, what I really want to do is I want to shoot all RGB and then I want to shoot RGB and luminous at a 50% ratio of 50% luminous and 50% uh, uh, split across the three channels of RGB. So I want to do my own experimentation. So that's where I headed. So that's uh, what I decided to do. So tonight what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to shoot RGB and at the end, I'll shoot about 10 luminous just to see what that exposure looks like. Is three minutes too much for a luminous exposure under these skies? That'll help me. And then uh, the next night, I would uh, split that night up between luminous and RGB. I'd process each stack each night separately and then see if I can visually detect a difference uh, between uh, the two approaches of 100% RGB split across three channels versus 50% luminous and 50% split across the uh, three uh, RGB channels. So that's going to be my approach. And I think now is a good time for me to do some experimentation and try to get a technique that's right for me. And again, there's a lot of different thoughts on some people just think the more RGB you get, it's better. Some think the luminous uh, with RGB is better. And I really need to come to some conclusion on my own based upon my equipment and, uh, you know, on, on what's best for me. So, all right, <clears throat> that's about it. I think... Um, I am going to shoot some flats on this trip. Uh, I have a video that I'm putting together that I took in my backyard prior to the trip showing my approach to a flat panel now that I've built using some gels. So one of the things about being out uh, remote, uh, you got to fill your day. So I brought that video footage and I'll probably sit down today and uh, part of tomorrow and put that video together and then share that with you on what it looks like to use a uh, $20 tracing panel with a sheet of plexiglass and uh, $13 worth of uh, neutral density gels. And then I'll show you some results of uh, what I collected and, um, and what my approach was like. So that video should be coming out in a, in a few days. So, all right, uh, the important thing is don't be disappointed. Things change and I'm all right with what happened last night. I didn't see any benefit to uh, collecting bad data last night. Uh, on top of it, the seeing was poor. So there were a lot of things working against me. And, but when the uh, guiding started to deteriorate, it was just really 
uh, time uh, to pull the plug. But uh, I tell you, I love life with an ASI Air Plus compared to using Nina, uh, which I used in the past. It's a very simplified approach. Uh, yes, maybe I'm giving up some optimal benefit that Nina can provide over the ASI Air Plus, but for my current standards and what I'm looking to do, the ASI Air Plus it has been a, a, an excellent tool. And uh, again, I want to thank all those people a year or so ago when I was sharing issues that I had with uh, Nina, nighttime imaging and astronomy, uh, that you were saying, go with the ASI Air. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I, I decided to check it out. And again, I think that gets into what we have the ability to do in this hobby of astrophotography. We can experiment, we can explore. Yes, what other people are doing and their thoughts are important, but at the end of the day, I think we have to kind of figure it out for ourselves, in particular as beginners, and I still consider myself a beginner, uh, it's okay to explore. I know imaging time is precious, and maybe we don't want to use some of that time to experiment, but I think, you know, on the front end of your journey, if you do some of that experimentation, like you make some decision of how many pixels you want to dither, um, you know, how often you want to refocus uh, during the course of the night. I think that's all part of it. And then what happens is you start to get into a methodology, a technique, or, uh, you know, that, that works for you, and uh, you go forward with that. So anyway, all right. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it feels great to be down here in GMARS. I love the desert just in general. I love the high desert with this is the high desert. Um, you can see far. And last night was the sky beautiful. I mean, being stuck up in uh, San Mateo for the last three months or so, uh, where you really can't see many stars, and then you come out here, and it's just uh, a beautiful experience. So uh, very happy I uh, drove the 473 miles to get down here. It's worth it to me, and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe staying here through Sunday, uh, possibly Monday, based upon the weather conditions. It's supposed to be clear and based upon how the winds are doing. So. Uh, I'll have some further updates probably uh, from here on this trip. If nothing else, putting a video together gives me something to do during the hours of uh, daylight while I wait for darkness the next night. So, all right. I hope uh, you're uh, doing well wherever you're at. If you're imaging something right now, why don't you put that in the comments, share it with others what you're imaging. Don't forget that I have Astro Vagabond and Friends on Facebook. It's a private group. Uh, feel free to join. It's a place that we could share information and share images and those type of things. I know you're probably already subscribed to a lot of groups, but here's one more. Uh, if you want to uh, join a community of fellow astro uh, photographers, uh, that's available to you. Again, uh, check out the links in the video description. I have one for OPT. Uh, affiliate marketing link and I also have Amazon links if you're an Amazon buyer or you're looking to buy something uh, uh, from OPT if you lose my uh, use my link it helps generate a few pennies for the channel and that's always appreciated okay clear skies until next time